Okay, so <clears throat> I apologize for the length of time it's taken to produce another video. I had a lot of plans for how I wanted to do this. And typically with me, when I get caught up in the logistics of things, <clears throat> it often ends up getting on the back burner and I don't get around to it because I have so many other things going on. So in order to progress this series, I've decided to just um, do this stuff live rather than have it all laid out and uh, step by step. That's probably a nicer format, but time being what it isn't. Uh, something is better than nothing, perhaps, but regardless, um, what I'm, uh, what I'm going to do is kind of go through the initial setups that I do, and then I'm going to jump in and just start editing music. Um, uh, as I mentioned in the earlier videos, I'm doing this under the or through the eyes of someone for someone for you guys that do not know how to read music you don't know how to edit music you don't know how to transpose music so this is just going to be a what i have dubbed editing by sight now that sounds stupid but Visually, you can see what the notes are doing, and you, since we know, I've already covered what the uh, instruments are capable of, which ones are suitable for short notes, which ones are not, which ones are suitable for sustained notes, and which ones are not, uh, and we'll kind of touch on those as we go through and uh, start editing the music, but... Um, what I intend to do with this is do the first steps and then move into Sakaiju, which is my DAW, Digital Audio Workshop, Workstation, whatever you want to call it. Um, I use Sakaiju because it's open source, it's free, and it has all the bells and whistles that you have to pay for, even with Anvil Studio. Now, I'm pretty sure that most people are using Anvil Studio, and that's great. But... Um, and there are things that I can do with Sakaiju that you're not going to do with Anvil unless you're willing to fork up the bucks. <clears throat> so, uh, to start with, um, you're going to obviously need to download and install uh, Maestro. I use... Uh, a different version of Maestro than what most people use because I don't like the 14 limitation. Uh, the one that I use doesn't have that limitation, but I still keep it to 16. Um, give me a second. I am looking it up. The Let's take you over to that screen and if you go in you're looking for IFELS Maestro upgrades you can do your own research on this to figure out um, what it is and what it does it adds a lot of bells and whistles to Maestro not just um, not just the ability to go beyond the 14 uh, piece limitation but uh, there's also some interesting editing that you can do where you can uh, change the uh, the volume if you will the uh, uh, within the track something that the original version and of maestro would not do um, whatever volume you set for the track is the is the 
the the volume that's set. Of course, we've we've covered that. It's not really the volume, uh, but the just for uh, to eliminate confusion, we're going to call it uh, volume. But you can take pieces of the track if you want to emphasize notes or series of notes, and you can highlight them and you can uh, increase the volume. Something that a lot of people have been trying to figure out how to do. What I used to do in the past is I would I would extract that those notes and duplicate them on another track, and then uh, I would uh, combine them on an instrument that will play combined notes and double up on instruments where if it's an instrument that will not uh, uh, elevate sound, if you double up on the notes, that's how I used to do that. But being able to do this within uh, Maestro helps. But anyway, so this is where you would come. You would download the uh, ZIP or the MSI. Completely up to you. Uh, I download the MSI file, install it. A uh, couple of interesting things. Um, this particular version comes with ABC player that's compatible with the 16, but also it comes with uh, another thing called um, ABC tools. And it will allow you to, if you, uh, if you go like when I'm creating 24 piece, uh, parts, I have to split them up between 12 and 12 because I'm running two different computers and, and I have a, I load them on one and load them on the other, but, uh, essentially I could do it all on one PC <clears throat> and using this tool, you can combine all of the, um, the two ABC files into one file. It's an interesting tool. Uh, you'll have to look into it if you want more details. Not a big deal. I'm not going to cover that right now. But anyway, this is the just do a search for uh, Eiffel's Maestro upgrades. Um, you can see the link. Uh, and here I'm I'm not familiar enough to know how to magnify that for you, but. Again, if you just do a, a Google search for it, or if you can't find it, give me a shout on Discord, and I'll uh, I'll shoot you the link. So, so you'll install that, and then you'll want to get uh, Sakaiju. And then, if in Sakaiju, if you are in your browser, if you'll Perform a search uh, for Sakaiju <clears throat> on Google. It will be the second one that shows up. And here's the MIDI, uh, MIDI sequencer. If you scroll down, you can get this current version. When you download that, it's basically a zip file. You will need to copy the folder out of that zip file to someplace on your hard drive where you want to execute it. There is no install. Um, I just have it, I dropped it under, or, or on a secondary drive. You can put it on the root of your C drive. Doesn't matter. Just, just when you unzip it, there's a folder in there that says Akaju 8.0 in this particular one. Copy it over, open it up. You'll want to create a shortcut. As a matter of fact, I guess I could show you. Um, we'll go, there's Sakaiju. If you open it up, there's Sakaiju. You would just drag that over to wherever it is on your hard drive you want it. And when you open that up, there's Sakaiju.exe. Once it's on your hard drive, it'll actually have an icon that looks like a green tree, a bonsai tree. You right click it and you can send shortcut to desktop. You can uh, put a shortcut on in your start menu, in your start bar, whatever you want. You can put it in there. And then when you double click on it, it'll execute. And you will open up 
Sakaiju. And when you initially open up Sakaiju, it will have this empty score in it. Just close it so that you have a clean screen. <clears throat> now, I have Sakaiju and I have Maestro. Uh, I have four screens. So bear with me as I'm going through this. I'm going to have to switch monitors as I switch processes. And anyway, the first thing that I do, well, the first thing that most people do is they grab their AB or their MIDI file and they drop it straight into Maestro. And I kind of covered that before. <clears throat> the problem is, is when you drop it in here, it's just going to accept the um, the tracks as they are, which is fine as long as you never intend on editing them. But when you put the MIDI file in a MIDI sequencer or, or a DAW, that DAW is looking at that file and expecting certain rules to be followed. And when those rules are not followed, it's going to make adjustments to that MIDI file. Well, if that happens, after you have already created an ABC file in Maestro, when you save that MIDI file, when you go back to Maestro, the tracks are not going to show up in the same place. They're going to be they're going to be transposed. They're going to be different, and the instruments that are assigned to the tracks inside of Maestro are going to be shuffled up. So where you had a Lonely Mountain Fiddle on a track, it's now on the drum track or something weird. So one of the habits that I always make is when I work on a file, I always save the MSX. This is the Maestro. It's basically a configuration file that uh, it knows where the MIDI is located and it knows what all your edits are. So when you save it, as you can see, all these songs here are MSX files. So if I want to, let's say, drop this in here and edit it some more, it loads the song exactly the way I edited it. So if I want to come back here and I want to make more edits, I can do whatever I want. I don't have to start from scratch. <clears throat> so the MSX files to me are extremely important. They are just as important as the MIDI file because <clears throat> if I drop a MIDI file in here and I edit it the way I want to and I poop out an ABC file, the next time I want to make edits, and I promise I will, because I, I hear things all the time that I don't like, and I'll come back in and make changes. I don't want to have to do that from scratch. Uh, I just don't, because I spend an awful lot of time doing edits, as you're going to see. <clears throat> so if I want to come back and I want to edit the, the music inside of Maestro for any particular reason, or even if I want to make changes to the MIDI file, um, that you know, that, that translates into, I have to make changes into, uh, or in Maestro in order for that to take place. Um, I just want to grab the config file. And you notice all I did was take the config file and just drop it inside and it loaded. It's, it's a very easy process because it remembers where your MIDI file is located. So, uh, that just makes things much easier. And so that's what I, I try to teach, uh, is to always do that. Now, before you get involved in dragging over your uh, mini file to Maestro, as I mentioned before, those changes that will most likely take place in your mini file when you open it up in a DAW you want to do those first and then save the MIDI file before you drop it in here. So even if you don't plan on making edits to the MIDI, simply making this change will prevent you from having to make major changes later 
should you decide that you want to make some edits to the MIDI file. So if we look at Sakaiju, and I'm going to show you, see I have these files open here, and here's my finished MIDI files, and these are my test ones. I don't even really need that open. The next file I'm going to use is uh, Finding the Light. It's a it's an original piece. Um, actually, I'm going to... It's Mike's piece. So... Now I have my MIDI file here. Now I'm going to drag it down into and drop it into Sakaiju. So I'm going to go back to Sakaiju and I'm going to go up and grab that MIDI file. And I'm going to drop it in Sakaiju. Now you see I have a warning. It sees some channel event problems. <clears throat> actually, scratch that. It's, uh, it's actually, yeah, it's going to shuffle these up and, and put them in the right order in the tracks. So that's what it's doing here. And then if there's any errors, here we go. We've got some tempo problems. There are some events in here that it doesn't like. It's not, they're not standard. And they want to know if you want to correct them, and you do. And now, all of a sudden, your MIDI file is corrected. It's that quick. Now, this first track is going to be all the events inside of your MIDI file. You can actually see the events. That's the event list. It's always in track one. And it it does everything. Control change, volume change, uh, everything. Uh, everything, all the data that controls the instruments inside of the MIDI file is located in, um, in your event list. And you can... There are there are sometimes you have to go in and remove events like uh, oh uh, uh, God I can't remember what they're called um, oh God I'm getting old forgetting stuff um, but uh, it, it's it's where they where you push down on a note and you uh, and you kind of stretch the note into a, 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 a across a couple of different notes. Um, God, I can't. I don't know why I can't remember what that's called. But uh, pitch bend. Um, pitch bend will not work inside of uh, inside of Maestro. Maestro will turn it into separate notes going from the starting note to the whatever the end of the pitch bend is. Uh, so a, a lot of times it sounds real wonky and you have to go in and remove the pitch bend inside the MIDI fall and then that's going to make the notes weird and sometimes you have to go in and correct the notes inside of uh, the track especially on a melody uh, or the vocals whatever you want to call it not the melody but the vocals. Um, and uh, you know, I run into that not 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 often, but I do run into it. But anyway, here's our here's our song. Here's all the tracks to our song. This particular song has 39 tracks. I chose this song because I wanted to not only show what I do inside of the uh, the MIDI file for editing, but it, how to handle it when there's so many tracks. Now I have a 16 piece orchestra and I have a 24 piece orchestra. So having this many parts is not the end of the world. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look see if there's any drums and there's not, uh, wait a minute, there's a bass drum right there. Not enough notes for me to care. So I won't even be using a drum in this. Uh, I got cymbals, triangles. We can't reproduce those. Um, so I may can use that for something, may not, don't know, might not get used. One of the things that you need to know about editing files is if you decide you want to go in here and clean this up and there's tracks that you don't want, you have to delete them before you save anything in Maestro. Because 
let's say you go into Maestro and you assign instruments to these tracks and you assign instruments to these tracks and then you come in here and you delete these tracks in the middle, save it, when you reopen it, all those assignments are going to shift because this is track 22. So when you delete this, track 22 is no longer vibraphone. It's going to be something down here. So it, it, everything's going to shift. And uh, what will happen is, is it, it won't shift in Maestro. Maestro will just error out because it doesn't know what to do. When you save the file, these tracks were there. Now they're no longer there. Well, if they were down on the end, no problem. But because there's this big gap in between the two, I don't understand why. Can't tell you. But I. Uh, but the. Uh, but Maestro won't recognize it. Won't do anything with it. It just errors out. So, if you make the mistake of deleting something inside of here, and you try to open it in Maestro, it's not going to work. You'll have to get, start back over uh, with your MIDI file and and just basically make the assignments again uh, after you've uh, made that mistake. So just know that up front. Sometimes it's better just leave them in there. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, yes, it's a distraction sometimes, but it's not that big a deal. So anyway, so we have made the correction. We're going to come up here. We're going to save the file. We had one note duration that was below zero. It corrected that. So all the corrections have been made to this file. So now I'm going to go back up where I grabbed that MIDI before. And I'm going to go into Maestro. And, and typically, I will sit here and listen to it for a second. I just want to hear what it's doing. Uh, obviously, it doesn't have our instruments on there. It's still using the original uh digital or to the best of its ability the digital uh instruments but you can look at it and see where it's going one of the things that i want to look at usually when i go into my uh, uh daw is i want to see what the strings look like because you know it's it's that's really critical <laughs> because the strings have to match up with the instruments um, again I use a lot of Lonely Mountain Fiddle and that has to be sustained notes so uh, I like to look at those lines and uh, or those tracks and see if it if if they're sustained if they're not can I sustain them uh, so that I can get the full sound out of it and not scratching sounds so sometimes you can you can find good sustained notes on a French horn line or whatever, and, and those make good strings too. Uh, but just looking at this stuff here, I'm seeing a lot of short notes. That doesn't look bad down there, the contrabass. That might be a good cello line. Um, but anyway, let's, let's listen. <laughs> First thing I'm going to need to do is add some instruments here. I've got 16. I know that's going to run me down to 25 because the way I number my instruments. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to 25. That way I know I have all 16 accounted for. 
Now the first thing I see is a good place maybe we'll come back and test it for a loot of ages. I can drop that down an octave. That looks like a good spot for it. But that's still a little high. That red there means that those notes are out of uh they're they're too high outside of the three octave zone. So the way I can fix that is is I know this is track twenty one because I have an extra track because of the um The event list on track one, when I move over to Sakaiju, it's going to be track 22, not 21. So let's go over to Sakaiju and let's go to track 22. And we're going to look at the piano roll window. And there's the, there's the notes. That's the representation of the notes and we know that that was too high and I had to lower the octave by one so what I can do is is I can highlight all of this and drop that down one octave so that I don't have to do it inside of Maestro so that brought that into all those notes are now where I want them now. All these notes here at the end were two octaves too high. So I'm going to highlight all of this. And I'm going to go back to something I can grab easily. We're going to go down, duh. And if you want to double check, you can undo. We drop down. Oops. See, I screwed up. Should have been one, two, three. One, two, three. See, you don't have to read music, just use common sense. We're just using reference points and we're moving it to where it's in the correct octave. Actually, let's hit the backspace and highlight that again because I think this has got to come down two octaves. So we're going to put that there. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's double check it. One, two, three, it's in the right place. And since we highlighted everything, of course, I guess I should. So here's some tools in here. This is your pencil. This does individual notes. You can add a note. Here's your eraser. So you can uh, undo notes. And this is your selection tool. So you can select multiple notes. And that's what I was doing when I selected all those notes. And if you go back and look at all the ones I selected, it pulled them all down. And there you have it. Now, we hit save. And we go back to Maestro. And I, if you notice, I set the octave back to zero here. Now, I can pull that MIDI file back in here. And it will reload everything. And that, that, those notes will be in the right place where I just moved them. But the assignment of my loot of ages to this will not be there. So what I want to do is I want to save this. Now I have a, sp a certain formatting that you can come in here and you can <clears throat> you can set up your file naming, and I've done that. So I have a custom file naming system that puts the part count, 
transcriber, composer, and the name of the song, and the song length, the time. And you can see that right across here. Um, but, unfortunately, the song um, count, the part count, doesn't count these that I have added. It counts how many physical instruments are actually assigned to the tracks. So when I go to save this, I'm going to save my short song as it thinks there's only one track in there. So I'm going to change that to 16 and everything else is correct currently. And we're going to save it and it's going to show up over here. Now that that length may change depending on if there's another track with a longer length that I haven't, you know, I haven't assigned an instrument to you. But regardless, for the purpose of this, um, I've saved that. So now any changes that I make to the MIDI file, all I have to do is drag this MSX file over. And if we go down to track 21, you see track 21 is all within the three octaves that we need. Also, one of the things you can do if you're not having to use multiple maestro to, to get 24, there's a setting in here. Let's see. Remove silence at the start of the ABC file. And then all that dead space at the front's gone. So now as soon as you load it, it should start playing. Now there's silence here because I only have one track. And that track's not doing anything until it gets here. Let's add a harp down here, and let's reduce that, see that'll work. Now if you notice, these, these notes are pretty much the same, there's a couple of runs here that are different. But for the most part, these notes are the same, but it gives it an echo effect. Now, there are other ways of doing that that I can manually go in and shift the notes over a half a second or three seconds or whatever that will give it an echo effect. But, but this is very easily done in this particular one just by adding the, um, the Misty Mountain Harp. It also gives a little brassy tone to the sound. Sounds nice. That's a good start. Okay, I'm not worried about that harp. There's not enough notes in there to matter. Let's see here. So, we've got a flute in here, which is probably going to be between the flute and the clarinet. That's probably going to be our kind of a, the vocals, so to speak, of this song. It doesn't really have vocals. But let's go in here. And let's, you can't see the selection when I click it because it's above it on the other screen. But I'm, I'm uh, selecting basic flute. And then I'm going to assign that here. <clears throat> That's going to sound weird. That's awful low. Let's see what it sounds like.
make some changes to the music so we're going to go back over to Sakaiju to track three which is where that is and we're going to and Sakaiju this is your piano equivalents but if you left click and just do all that. If you notice, it highlighted everything within what I just selected. So I just selected that entire track by doing that. And I just moved it down an octave. But I didn't want to move it down an octave. I wanted to move it up an octave. The problem with doing that is now I've essentially moved this out of range. So So I fixed that, dropped it an octave, and there's one other thing. Where is it? It's going to be right here. Now, technically, I don't have to do anything with it. This right here is showing up, and you can tell that this is where it is. These are the notes. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and we'll go back to Maestro. And if you look, there's that little piece, and there's one off to the side. It matches. This piano roll matches the piano roll over there. So this was the first one I moved down. This is the uh, this is the one that's still going to be up above the uh, the limitation. But I'm going to reload, save it. I'm going to look at the basic flute. Oh. There we go. So now it's the only spot where it's above it's here. Now, let me explain to you how that works. The fact that this is above its playable area, it's an octave too high. So what will happen is, is this will get played an octave below. It's going to be a little different, but even if I go in and manually drop it down, it's going to do the same thing. <clears throat> <clears throat> so just as well leave it like it is. We can hear what it's going to sound like. Not sure what it's going to sound like once we're done. If we don't like it, we can cut it out. But uh, let's see what it does. We'll, we'll reserve judgment on that until we get to the point where we have to do something about it. Okay, so let's go with a clarinet. 
because I notice we have a clear of that line. Very similar. I would like to not copy the flute line with the clarinet because when they try to harmonize, they don't do a very good job. And it doesn't look like they're the same. Do I need both of them? No. I can always come back. Uh, They're all pretty close. It's just a little harmony going on between them. Let's see what we've got here. Let's pull some of these sounds in. So let's look at, start filling in some, some music. So we've got Lonely Mountain Fiddle. We know we have a violin line here, but that is a very small one. We'll come back to that. Let's get one that's a full line. Those notes look a little choppy. Let's, let's see what we got here. Um, man, I don't like that. I don't want to get these too low. Let's see if we can, what we can do with this piece. Mm. Well, let's just go look at the track. Let's see what the track looks like. That's going to be track 35. Now remember it's a Lonely Mountain Fiddle. This looks great. Just, just from the type of notes they are, it looks fine. When I see stuff like this, inside the game with Lonely Mountain Fiddles, you're never going to hear that separate there. So, if you look at the controls, actually, wait a minute, uh, here we go. The select is S key, the eraser is E, the pencil is D. So I'm using the keyboard to switch between them. And if you ever forget, just hover over the top of it. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to stretch that note over. So I, yes, it's going to affect the tempo and not the tempo, but the, the rhythm of the song, but you're not really going to notice it. Not that much. Uh, the value you gain off of the sustain of that uh, violin is going to far surpass any uh, change in rhythm. So we're going to go in and make those changes. Usually this would be a breath for a person actually playing these instruments. But since we don't have to worry about that, we can kind of do what we want. I'm going to show you a little trick here. So all of these, I deleted the exact same measure of note. And I can use my select tool. And I can highlight all of them. And while still using the select tool, I can extend those notes out at the same time. 
open click with the select tool and everything disappears. And you're no longer, uh, or I'm sorry, your, your selection disappears. So now we're back to editing. Those look good. Let's move it along a little bit. Going to stretch that one out. This one. Not once have I said anything about reading notes or music. We are just looking at the notes, understanding what the instrument can and can't do, and then make changes based on that. The point of this is to make the music yours anyway. So any effect that this is going to have on the music is uh, not a big deal. Just like this right here, this step up, never going to hear that. That's going to translate into a bunch of scratches. It would be great if you could hear it, but you're not going to with a Lonely Mountain Fiddle. But I assure you, some, some other track in there has that same... Uh, it's probably a, a harp has that same step up. And there we go. So we have a bunch of beautiful long notes. Some of them are a little short, but that's fine. They're long enough that the Lonely Mountain Fiddle will play them just fine. So we're going to save that. And then we're going to come back over here and we're going to reload our song. And let's go down to our Lonely Mountain Fiddle and kind of see what's going on. Let's see here. Let's see what happens if we lower the octave. doing this let's look at one other thing we're going to add another lonely mountain fiddle and let's add it to violins too and let's look at so that's going to be extremely close to this as far as the octave so maybe this right here is a match to that so it's going to duplicate those notes so it's not going to be that big a deal. It's just going to duplicate them, which means it'll play it a little louder. This will play it a little lower, but it's in that octave. So this is really not going to hurt anything. So we'll leave it the way it is. But let's go to line 36. Again, it's 35 plus 1 over and on Sakaiju. So let's go to 36. Let's take a look at 36 line. Is there anything we need to do in here? Yes, there is. Let's stretch those out. And that one. Nobody needs to be taking a breath. Let's just play those notes. Okay, I'm going to erase it and then extend it out just as one single note. And remember, we can. Do it that way if we want to. 
I typically do it when there's a lot, but when there's only one or two, there's really no point in doing that. But I do run into a, a lot of situations where there are quite a few. Oops, made a mistake. Hit the back and then go back and continue on. Oops, undo. And there's another one. Another one. And let's move this down a little bit. All right. that oops right next to notes in here now if any of you need help you don't understand what I'm doing just send me a message on discord I can help you individually I don't typically have a whole lot of time to, but when I do have time, I don't mind sitting down and kind of going over this with you. So we have made all those, uh, taken all the short notes out or combined where we could to get a bigger sustain. We're going to save that. We're going to go back over to Maestro, reload our song. It's going to save. So bassoon is basically a bass horn. We've got some French horns, a lot of French horns, trumpets, all that. We can take advantage of in here. Um, let's see here. Let's do a basic bassoon. That's going to sound weird because there's one note too high. So let's go over here and track 13 and fix that. So that would be track 12 over there would be track 13 over here. And that's this right here. And they're doing a little step down, but that's not going to work. So we'll have to do a repeat and then a change. 
who's gonna know the difference? All right. Back to Maestro, reload the song, let's make the save. Bassoon. And you can see it's fixed. Put it where the bassoon should be. Change that to a basic bassoon.
just a waste of an instrument. Let's go ahead and add the lumen on the fiddles. We may have to go in and edit. 
just did was I, I looked at this uh, choir Oz ba bass line and it doesn't overlap notes with this track so I can put this instrument on both of these and it will never play more than one note at a time which is fine I mean you can play up to three on the um, Lonely Mountain Fiddle before it gets too trashy. I don't like three. I'd rather play one, two at the most. Three I can tolerate if I have to, but this is clean. So I can do both of these uh, tracks. Not that I'm hurting for uh, instruments, but still, this is this is good. This executes that well. Let's see what it adds to it. Just for the sake of showing you how to do this, let's take 33-34. So, let me go back over to Sakaiju and let's look at 33. And let's look at 34. Now, this is something that you can't do an Anvil Studio without paying for it. Which, if you look at it, I'm looking at two tracks at the same time. This is this uh, 33 or 34, and this is track 33. Over on in Maestro, this is uh, 32 and 33. But anyway, I want to. I'm going to look at 34, and if you notice, 33 is gone. I'm only looking at the single track. I'm just going to highlight that section because that's the only section on the track. Now I'm going back to the main screen. I'm going to come over here to where I highlighted this. Now what I want to do is it's that whole section. Uh, let me. I want to. Why? That's what I want to do because it's going to copy if you see all those lines that's the volume changes and stuff like that I want to maintain that and what I want to do is I want to make a copy of that up above 
so I'm going to hold down the control button. If I just if I just clicked it and drug up, it would move it. But I'm going to hold the control button, which is going to make a copy of it right above it. So what I've essentially done is duplicated this on another track. Let's save it. And let's go back over into Maestro and reload the song. And if you notice, here's that the one I just moved up here. Okay, I moved it up, but it's an octave too high, so it's not going to work. So I'm going to have to come back over here, and let's go back into the piano roll. And we want to look at 33, because that's where we placed it. And we can come in and we can highlight it. Grab it anywhere and just drag it down. That was right. And I see a few things I want to change. Let's unhighlight it. I should have done this before I moved it because now I have to do it twice. But luckily there's not a lot of edits on it. So I just changed tracks and I will come back in here. And make my edits again. And everybody looks is going to look at me like I'm nuts and wonder why in the world would you go in here and go through all this tedious crap to clean up the music. I want the music clean. I don't want it raspy, trashy, etc. So let's save that. Let's go back into here. There we go. That's still an octave high from this one. Let's see what it does. can do is we can go back into Sakaju if we don't like that if we want the whole solo thing um, which I kind of do uh, we're going to come in here and go back into It's in the same place, and it is. So now we're going to click in the open area so it's not highlighted again. This should be in the same, bring it into the same octave now. So we're going to reload it. Perfect. Now when we get over here, it should sound like a solo, just louder.
I just went over and Sakaju put it back where it was. I'm going to reload it. That's a little too low, getting some ugly sounds out of it. Let's go to track eight. That's Kaju. Let's turn off 33, go to eight. We're looking for that. So that's the beginning. There's that piece. And then we run into here. And this one we want to... Move up an octave. And then save it. And let's see what we got here.
Luckily, this sounds so much better in game than it does in this crappy mini sequencer. So we're going to save it. Got one more instrument we can put somewhere. Let's go with a basic bassoon. Let's put some trumpet in here. See what that sounds like. <laughs> Six, 456 so it looks like it's the same and then we can save the ABC file And then we'll go back over here, and there's our ABC file. <laughs> it sounds much different in the ABC player than it does Maestro, and even better in game.
See if the timing works on that. We're going to extend that out because I really love the loot in there. We have to adjust the timing on it. trashy sounding and a lot of times it'll do that when the memory's got a problem uh it happens with both versions i don't know why but that sounds garbage didn't hear it with the abc play
it sounds like that. That's an issue. Let's see here. Let's export to ABC again. And let's listen to it. See, that is on track 22. Uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't work.
because there's too many tracks. Okay. Shoot. It should work, I don't know why it doesn't. There's no additional end of track, so it should. That's weird. Oh well. Doesn't want to play right in here anyway. But I don't hear the... I don't hear the loot of ages in here. Yeah, I do. It's there. Is it ends on one forty five? It's just not loud enough to get over there. Yeah. It's just not loud enough to get over the um strings that's the problem Because you have two, you have the harp and the the lute playing at the same time, so it picks them up better. But when you lose that second, it doesn't play as well. It's being overshadowed by the strings. So, out of curiosity,
let's try the same thing here. Oops. do some more work to this one but that just takes time and editing
let's fix that. Let's go over to Maestro. That was the bas basic bassoon 372. Let's take that off. Let's give the flute some extra kick. Ah, uh, basic flute, not basic loot. There we go. Let's turn down the mail and see what that does here.
That just is weird. That just is weird. Because it's not getting the right sound. Oh, again, yeah, I'm glad it sounds better in game. <laughs> See what it sounds like. If it needs to be made more adjustments, we'll do it. But you get the basic idea. This didn't have nearly as much editing in the MIDI file as I suspected it would have, and there will be more that I'll do that will have ones where I'll have to split harmonies out uh, and make uh, you know turn three track or one track into three because of the harmony in it. Uh, but you've got the basic idea. If there's any questions, ask me in Discord. Um, again, I know this is kind of jumping in the deep end, but uh, you just watch me make them, ABC. So, um, again, if this is helpful, let me know. If you want to see more, let me know. And, uh, you know, uh, have fun in Lord of the Rings and make some music. <laughs>